Well, hello from Montreal. Um, I have reached my new home. You can take the girl out of the country, but you can't take the country out of the girl. I've got my I Love Rural poster up. I have a friend on Twitter who does the Reasons Rural Rocks. So any of you ECI 831ers out there who are rural, please start following Sherbani and uh, and contributing to why you think the rural rock. I had a tough time in class last week with Shel uh, with Shelly Terrell. There was a moment when we were discussing if we got into education to change the world. I mean. Everybody wants to change the world, but should we? What's the power relationship in wanting to change the world? Recently, I've been reading this book, Planet Walker. How, how fitting. Last week I lost my voice. Uh, Planet Walker, uh, his name is John Francis. He spent 22 years walking around, not using motorized vehicles and he spent 17 years in silence. At the beginning, in the you know late 70s, his family comes to visit him and they're quite distressed. They think that John has lost his mind. As my father stretches to understand my journey, I realize that maybe you can't change the world by your actions alone, but you can change yourself. And when you do, the world around you may change, by attempting to understand you as we all try to understand each other. In his view of, of what it means to instill change in the world, individuals come to meet us in a place of change rather than going out and trying to instill some kind of change on the world. I think that in terms of education, this really comes into play in the power relationships that are within the bureaucratic structure of a school, of a university. One of my favorite writers on education, I introduced him last week, Paulo Freire, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Although I'm starting to branch out now, I just bought Ivan Illich. <laughs> which isn't branching very far as far as I understand. So when John Francis talks about only being able to change ourselves and in that presenting to the world something new to understand, this is exactly in line with Paulo Freire's approach to education. And as I hinted at last week, uh, he, he really posits that reality is a fluid thing and I am entirely encouraged by that. For a very long time I think that we as a society have looked at change as something that has to happen at the top first before anything significant can happen. A beautiful quote by Margaret Mead, never think for a moment that a small group of engaged citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Of course, those people who are engaged citizens are first changing their own world. They're changing themselves. They're, they're changing their lifestyles. And I think that, that is the most powerful agent of change, both in and out of the classroom, is simply a desire and a willingness to engage and learn. Enjoying what else is happening on the DS106 radio. It seems like we're in a pretty special season right now. People are bringing some awesome stuff repeatedly and consistently. Happy Thanksgiving. I am thankful for all of the non-mainstream lifestyle choices that I've made in the last year and the way the universe has just opened itself to me for doing that. Happy Thanksgiving. I am thankful for great people who invite us into our home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Yay! Even though we're nowhere near our own homes. And uh, I'm thankful for the year that we've shared together. Aww. Uh, Top that. <laughs> I am thankful um, 
well for the year that we spent together, but more than that, for making it through the year happy as well. <laughs> Ways that people have moved themselves to help the land and help develop food systems that are more sustainable and, and delicious. I just feel grateful for being alive and being healthy and like being able to breathe like good air and have green and have tam tams and have like all this amazing like artistic freedom and musical freedom and abil ability to travel and just it's endless. Yeah. Gratitude, that's the word of the day. <laughs>